All right. Um, support and resistance. So, kind of four parts to it. There's trends. There's high probability support and resistance. There's chart pat- patterns, and then TA techniques. So technical analysis techniques that can be combined to kind of play support and resistance. So at any one time, as you know this far, if you were here for the first weekend. Any at any one time, a trader has only three options, and that's either buy, so going long, selling, selling short, or sitting on the sidelines, standing along. So let's kind of take a hypothetical scenario of bulls pushing prices up to a level that has previously been a resistance level. So bulls successfully overpower bears to push up prices. So we're going to look for here. So they push up the prices. Price reaches a level that for whatever reason saw previously uh, a previous price reversal. So um, as bulls are in control, we run up to this point. It reverses. We run up to this point again. So we saw reversals back here. We're seeing the same kind of reversal at this point here. So on and so forth. So as we approach this level... Uh, most times, well, I guess I couldn't say most, but some of the times bulls decide to go ahead and close out their trades and take a profit off the table. At the same time, bears see price approaching the level and it loses momentum, so they decide to sell short. So it kind of, if we were to draw another line here, this would kind of be support, which we see here. And they're just playing this ping pong effect. Buyers, let's see if I can do this. Oh, that's horrible. Buyers are buying here. Ugh, and sellers are selling there. So as price slows and even halts near our resistance levels here, some of the bears come along and join up here. But bulls are down here. So price is going to be declining away from this resistance level and this resistance level has been respected so again we came up here tested fell back came up here again respected this level came back down tested again respected it um so now as we move forward in time from here price came back down and now accelerates again towards that resistance level bears profited down in here on the short sell and then they are going to end up going short again here because we've had it here, here, and here. Um, however, in this instance, there's more bulls than bears. So say there's, you know, now here, ugh, there's two, and here, there's only one. So two bulls, two buyers to the one bear, one seller. Now, um, since there's more bulls than bears, the price goes ahead and breaks on through the resistance. Once past our resistance level, it's gonna trigger bears to hit their stop loss. I don't, I don't think we've covered quite deeply covered stop loss yet. But basically, whenever you are short a stop and you're running a stop loss on the short, what it does is it forces you to buy. So originally we had two buyers and one seller and down here. As we break through, this one, this one uh, seller here actually would become a buyer as the stop loss is hit. Uh, so bull uh, where was I at um, so yeah so there's so there's more bulls than bears price breaks the resistance once it's past the resistance level uh, price triggers bears um, stop losses forcing the price even higher now some bulls are going to take profit you know so as this seller becomes a buyer as the stop loss hit. You know, we get, say, to this point, 
the buyers that originally bought off of here are going to take profit. Uh, here, let me switch colors to make this a little easier. I can't really see that. That's a weird color. Uh, I'll use this one. So the guys who bought down here are probably going to look to sell, you know, somewhere kind of in this range at, as we, uh, as we popped up now feeling more confident the bulls are going to who, who decided to wait are going to buy more at the previous resistance level as well while we break through right in this area and that's going to also push this price higher so with that as well our resistance that we had here now becomes support so now that we kind of have a base outline of what causes support and resistance, we can now kind of form the following assumptions. Support becomes resistance and resistance becomes support. That is a constant that is never changing and will always remain the same when talking about support and resistance. The longer a support and or resistance level holds, the more significant it does become. The more time a support level holds, the more liable or reliable it is deemed to be. And when a significant support and resistance level breaks, the more significant a subsequent move can be expected. So if you, let's just say we have a pattern somewhat like this. Um, this was your resistance. And then down here was your support so we only got one test of resistance before we went ahead and popped through so it wasn't a super strong resistance there wasn't a lot of of selling activity going here it just kind of happened to be a one-off case versus up here where we saw you know one two three times of it testing that resistance before we ever popped so this move would have been a lot more significant and enticing for bulls to go ahead and hop on versus maybe something such as this um so once a level of resistance has been broken to the upside you're often going to see the same kind of level retested so here uh let me let me just try and clear some of this out there we go sorry you had to hear me clicking so now that We've broken through this point. We have our resistance that's now support. So anytime it breaks above resistant, it becomes support. And then, of course, the opposite is true. So whenever, if this were above and it was doing this and then it broke down, this would become resistance from the former support. Um, now, like I was saying previously, the longer a support resistance level holds the more significant it becomes levels of support and resistance can last anything between a couple minutes to years or even decades um you know a couple minutes might be on a short momentum stock that agent trades in the morning to you know years and decades being things like uh, commodities or bonds interest rates something of those natures now, the reason for the break doesn't usually concern the technical analyst because we assume something special has changed within market conditions for this level to break. So your technical analysis isn't necessarily going to be, of course, the reason that it breaks. You know, nobody's sitting there in overall macroeconomic trends, look, you know, looking at equity and say, oh, here is support and resistance let me just try and buy my way through a, a support or resistance line or or sell in, in the other case it usually happens due to some sort of global macroeconomic trend or you know microeconomic trend within a company something of the nature um so whilst there's many ways to find some uh, support and resistance level. I'm going to try and cover some of the simplest and most frequently used. Uh, these are methods that I use myself and are applicable to 
every time frame or market and accessible to anyone with charting software. Um, if you don't have charting software yet, trading view is what most of us use. If you are on a broker platform and already trading, then of course you have charting software within your broker. If you don't want to, uh, get a, get a trading view subscription, which is totally fine. So the idea is to combine several forms of support and resistance to gain more confidence in a particular level holding in the future. The more of these levels you can identify within a relatively close range to each other, the better. Um, so for price wise, probably going to cover horizontals, zones and trend lines and channels, and then indicators, uh, probably just cover pivot points, Fibonacci's and moving averages. Um, so let me go find this one. I did save it. Cool. Not gonna let me make that bigger. Well, I guess it's not gonna let me make that bigger. Well, that's unfortunate. Let me try and grab it again. All right, let me do it this way. Let's make it bigger here. There we go. Alrighty. Um, so this is going to be your by far the most simplest method. And the one that I'd say most people use 90% of the time. If you had to learn only one form of analysis, then I would probably stick with this one. So all we're really looking for here are areas on the chart which have been tested many times. The more times, the more reliable, and ideally have been tested as both support and resistance. If they have been tested both as support and resistance, then you'll hear this uh, used as a pivotal support and resistance level. Um, so on thinkers, actually on, on most trading platforms, whenever you move your cursor onto a chart, you kind of get a uh, crosshair, which is, which is like this. So, you know, perfectly vertical and perfectly horizontal. Um, I think it's control D. I think it's control D on thinkorswim. I, I may be wrong, um, but that's how you enable that crosshair. And then you can move your mouse up and down without clicking to kind of find areas. Um, don't worry about making the levels perfect because it's very rare that they are. You always tend to have wicks kind of coming out either side of it. That's all right. Um, and, and it's, it's perfectly normal and acceptable for the, for the wicks and whatnot to test every once in a while. So ideally you always want to start on a higher time frame. So if you are swinging and going longer term, you know, I would start probably on the weekly time frame and then work your way to daily and then four hour. If you are day trading, I would, I would stick with the, uh, you could go to four hour if you're kind of doing, you know, a four day play, but that's kind of, kind of 50, 50. Uh, other than that, I would stick with 15 minute five and one. If you're day trading, but you know, kind of start on those higher time frames and then work your way in. It'll it'll make your life a lot easier. So that makes sense so far. Everyone good? All right, cool. Let me go grab this next one. Oh, we had more people join. Jenks, how are you? Give me one second. I apologize.
Um, so zones are similar to horizontal and or pivotal support and resistant levels, except they allow for much more breathing room. If any of you have spent any time around Bunny Lytic or myself, all you'll hear us tend to talk about is zones. It's the only thing either of us use. So these are not levels where you expect the and exact price to hit in reverse, but areas where you expect some sort of price or hesitation, if nothing else. Um, regularly when using this method in a support and resistance setting, the methods used to identify the zones are congestion areas, swing points, and long tails slash wicks. And these congestion areas work on all time frames, and it's simply a case of looking left and noting these areas as potential support resistance areas before the price reaches there. Um, so, if we're looking here, you you can see how there's some kind of messy sideways price action right around in this range, and that's what's highlighted here. Price then rallied upwards to nearly 50 after that and then post that price came all the way back down into this area and it held a support so drawing the long box before price ever got there is how you would set this up um if you want to see some kind of more examples of how this looked they're more supply and demand based opposed to support and resistance but they're kind of interchangeable uh, there's pdfs in the trading strategies money do you want to tag that channel in chat if you would if you're still here if not someone remind me and i'll do it um so it's not really an exact science and no and certainly not a signal signal to go ahead and buy but what it does is it does help anticipate an area of support long before ever getting there um then we have swing points swing points must be one of if not the most closely kind of watched points on a chart um anyone who uses dow theory elliott waves trends analysis higher highs lower lows concepts etc what you know watch the swing points on the chart as part of their analysis they, they all do it it's all a part of it um they don't need to be precise but you usually at the very least get a price reaction when we revisit a previous swing point um so just kind of keep that in the back of your head uh, choo -choo -choo -choo. Bum, 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 bum. Me grab a new one All right, so. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Okay, we're still on horizontal, sorry. I don't remember where we were. So, all we're really looking for is areas on a chart that have been tested many times. So, long wicks, or long tails, that's wicks, also referred to as spikes. Long wicks highlight areas that have been aggressively attacked, yet successfully defended making an important an important price level for future reference using a long wick or spike in isolation isn't really enough um if we do see multiple areas though where the spikes appear i'll tend to draw a box connecting these areas to, to draw the zone you know so as you can see here we you know we have wick here wick here wick here and wick here so this is our highest kind of wick in this section here and this is our lowest wick so just draw the box accordingly to that um i know this is a 4x example that's where a lot of this stuff does tend to um pop up and see so it's easiest to pull examples from there but these are very common characteristics across 
uh, var varying different types of markets. So, do do do. Off to the next one. Do channels and trend lines. So, trend lines in essence are just support and resistance level. And a channel is just two parallel trend lines. So, there is real power in using the methods whenever you identify a level which coincides with another form of support and resistance, such as horizontal or pivotal. Um, so, in this example, we can see the lower channel or trend line here coincided with the um it's hard to see down here but it's the 61.8 fibonacci retracement uh, when price hits this level it didn't look back and, and we'll i'll cover this a little bit more in, in in detail here in a second but you know just channel traded here except for down here we did break but other than that you you channel traded. There is a function on your, at least on Trading View and Thinkorswim, that you can just do a channel and and it would have fit just like this. But you can all you can always draw it out normally, like support and resistance lines and trend lines. Not a problem with that at all. Uh, let me pull out this one. Oops. Wrong. new all right so you can you can also see channels within channels a lot of times if you look for it however they do suffer from the same drawbacks as trend lines Quite often, by the time you've identified, most of the move is already over. Um, but a useful feature of channels within channels is they can provide rough profit objectives when they see overlap. So here we can see uh, what's this one? Gold. Is it? Yeah, gold. And price reversed when it reached the upper band of each channel. So you know a pattern, a pattern like this. You know you would kind of look to. Can I edit on? Oh, no, no, uh, no. All right, we're just going to leave it normal. Um, so let's just say, you know, whenever it crossed above, you know, we drew the channel here. Uh, say we drew it back here. It may have looked a little different than if we drew it all the way out here. But say we broke above this horizontal resistance here. We could have somewhat seen a, a kind of trend following um, if you just play around and draw lines. So things may not be quite as obvious or front facing in the very beginning, but what you can look for is, is different types of, of trends. So it doesn't hurt by any means just to kind of start drawing the different trend lines across the charts and seeing if anything kind of fits whenever you're first getting started and, and getting used to it. Eventually you'll just be able to see it. But um, so, so that's kind of that. So let's go to pivots a little more. All right. Um, so Pivot, pivots are, I'd say, mostly used by Forex traders. If I had to if I had to say one demographic used the most, it'd be them. But it is very, I'd say it's all. It's not uncommon in, in the equities market either. Um, so you'll often hear reference to intraday traders using them, but they can also be used on higher time frames, such as daily or weekly charts. They are one of the few, it's a quote unquote predictive indicators available. 
as they use yesterday's data to project tomorrow's support and resistance. So it is taking past data and kind of projecting forward. Of course, no indicator or algorithm or anything can predict what's going to happen a day in advance. But um, daily pivot levels uh, with tend to consist of three, uh, R1, R2, and R3. And the three support levels, S1, S2, and S3, which use yesterday's close, high and low prices as a part of their calculation. So R1, R2, R3 um, are uh, just three resistance. And then your S1, S2, S3 are yesterday's close, high and low prices um, as part of the calculation. So here you can see how price has respected the daily pivot level and rallied up to R1 but then continue to the midway point between R1 and R2. There's, of course, no way of knowing in advance which ones will get respected, but many traders only focus on trading be between pivot R1 or pivot to R or S2. Um, anything outside of that, ten, I would classify as standard deviation. So not too often that do things kind of standardized deviate outside, but it, it will happen. It's going to happen. Um, so whilst you can see reactions at these levels and they do at times appear predictive, there's also times where they are completely ignored and you question why you even have them on your chart. It's just a part of the game. That's how it goes. So you'll, you'll see many strategies using these levels, but my personal experience has led me to believe that you shouldn't use these in isolation by any means like this shouldn't be just the one and only thing that is that's on your charts so um for that reason i, I kind of take more notice of a pivot level if they coincide with a, another level of support and resistance such as say a moving average a pivotal support resistance or even another pivot somewhere um let me pull up this one this is a weekly one all right so this is a weekly one. So, for example, if I see that, you know, weekly R2, well, this is a weekly. I, I'm going to talk a little differently here. So if I see like a weekly 2 R2 at least and a monthly R1 are close to each other, I'm just going to draw a box like I did earlier, if you remember that, and then delete the pivot level to kind of just clear up the charts if, if, if I'm running it this way. So... Um, Monthly and weekly pivots, the weekly and monthly pivot point calculations are the exact same as the daily, only they use previous weeks or months open, high, low, and close points as opposed to previous day's data. Uh, here you can see a tight zone between the monthly S1, uh, which is which is here, monthly S1, and then the weekly E1. Uh, yeah, so monthly S1, weekly E1. And then, so I'm going to pay a lot more attention to this level of resistance over any single pivot level. Additionally, we can see that there are uh, two high wicks. Yeah, two high wick candles that tried to break above the pivots but failed to. So this is kind of a third reason as to why there's weakness near the pivot levels. I, um, I only put pivot levels onto my charts if I... If, if I'm going to run them, you know, the temporary highlight areas where pivot uh, overlap or are close to each other. And then once I've marked these on the charts with boxes, I'll, I'll um, remove them just to kind of clear up my charts. And so it doesn't become a hot mess. That is, that is one piece of advice I'll give you, you know, of course, outside of the lesson, try and clear up your charts from with, with junk. You don't want a bunch of stuff going on. Otherwise, you're going to confuse yourself and you don't want to confuse yourself. It's already confusing enough trying to learn how to trade. All right, let's do Fibonacci. So 
There's two forms of Fibonacci. There's retracements and extensions. For support resistance levels, I only am going to use retracements, so we're only going to cover those today. Um, the retracement tool is a quite aptly named as this is exactly what we're trying to measure. Um, when a trend is in effect and we see a suspected you know, phase two move known as a correction, counter trend, or retracements. Uh, we measure the distance of phase one and try to anticipate where phase two may end. So, But remember that markets are fractal, so you can also measure much longer trends for or information on the, fra uh, um, on the fractal na nature of trends, but that's, that's kind of a whole different conversation. So, but for simplicity... I am only going to use the 38.250 and 62.8 retracement levels and, and take more notice if they overlap with each other. Fib numbers, well, you use multiple, but kind of take more notice if they overlap with other Fib numbers or forms of support and resistance. So I know we're talking about things kind of individually, but use them in confluence with each other. Um, Let's do, uh, do, 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 do moving averages as well. All right. Um, so I don't think we've quite covered in moving averages yet. Uh, I think they are covered in the course PDF though. That That's free for everyone. It's in the premium course section. Um, something to keep in mind, however, the fact that MA is like their name and implies a move. You know, there's no golden rule stating which periods you should use or which type. There's, you know, simple, exponential, weighted, um, so the SMA, WMA, EMA, I think that, I feel like there's a couple of those, I just can't think of them. But anyway, it's more important that you are familiar with the characteristics of the moving averages you choose to use. All moving averages lag behind price. So if you are going to use them, you know, if I were to use them, I'm only going to place them onto a chart temporarily to see if they coincide with other support and resistance levels before removing them to keep my chart clear. Uh... If you go look at other textbooks, you're going to see that many of these textbooks or strategies referring to price bouncing off of moving averages, but I treat them more as trend lines. I would never enter a trade simply because the price is tested, you know, it's a, a, a standardized moving average. I prefer to take a lot more um, confidence and, and more confluences in the trades, you know, for me personally, primarily being volume. Um, so if I, I guess if I run in a strategy, I'm going to use a, what, what are the standards that the eight or nine, the 21, 50 and 200 EMA, the exponential moving average, but you would do just as well using the SMA, which is simple moving average. The 50 and 200 are very popular. So are closely watched by a lot of market participants. So it makes sense to use these as they tend to get reactions and act as a dynamic support and resistance level. However, the 8, 9, and 21 EMA, I wouldn't really use for support and resistance at all, but instead to visualize the area between the two as kind of like a cloud to look for buy or sell setups around these areas. Um, so kind of in this example, the, uh, or which is this one? What is it? So pri price is kind of, so I forgot to label these, but um, right. Okay. So, sorry. So the, this one here is going to be our 200 and that's going to be our 50 right here. Um, so price is kind of stalled at the 200 EMA after the, you know, bullish run back up. So we came here, bull run stalled out. Um, also, I think it's good to keep in mind that uh, 
this level also held back here and was also previous support. So the longer the period of the moving average, the more reliable they tend to be as support and resistance, particularly on higher time frames such as daily and above. As for intraday time frames, the 200 moving average on a four hour chart is very similar to the 50 moving hour or moving average on the daily. And the, um, the 200 moving average on one hour is very similar to the 50 mo mo moving average on the four hour. Um, I think that kind of puts it all together. Well, at least that's individually. Um, are there any questions? up to this point. Cool. Works for me. Um so we can Yeah, I guess we can just start tying this kind of all together. Um, how do I want to do this? Uh, all right. So, as I know, I'm, I've said a bunch of times, and if you haven't picked up on it, I'm going to keep beating it into your head. Um, my repeated references to using uh, confluences. Cannot stress it enough. As a trader, it's your duty to trade high probability trades and add a way of increasing the probability of a level holding is if several forms of you know support and resistance or analysis all suggest the same areas uh let me where's my example because i did used to run it this way uh huh there we go oops wrong one There we go. So I'd say if I were doing it, this is how I'm going to do it. Um, need at minimum, you know, two from, you know, the preferred list we kind of talked about earlier. Uh, but most often, probably just better off to use all three when kind of learning it. And then you can kind of pick out one or I'd pick out at least two. Um, but. I only take notice of the additional confluences if one of my preferred methods also highlights an area. So never use any one thing in isolation. So once I've identified my confluences, I'm then going to, you know, draw boxes on the chart and move my indicators, which is going to keep, keep the charts uh, clear. So let's do, so we're going to do trend lines and horizontal support resistance. So a spike low, confirmed the pivotal support and resistance level which also coincided with the lower channel trend line um i found horizontal uh support and support ugh, support resistance lines and trend lines to be pretty reliable um so you know test test we kind of broke here and then came back and faded the plummet there um do 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 me pull this one. Really should start saving and getting all this these pictures together before. Oh well. Alrighty. Um so here we can see that this is coiling up into a sort of triangle pattern, which I know we haven't covered, but that's kind of what it's doing. Uh, while these are usually continuation patterns, which would suggest a resumption of the uptrend, there's now kind of law saying it has to, so to speak. So we are trading just above 97. You can see on the right, which is a pivotal support and resistance. And I want to know where the next level support is on this chart. It should break 97. And noted the following confluences at 
93.56. So 93.56 is a key level of support because it's a pivotal support resistance. We have the 38.2 Fib retracement. And then we also have the 50 EMA. But what if it breaks the 93.56 to the downside? That leaves us with 90.34. Uh, it's also a um, pivotal support and resistance. It's our 50% Fib retracement. And by the time it gets down there, that 200 EMA should catch and be right about there. Um, particularly like these kind of things because it's not often that you see all three confluences support and resistance within such tight ranges but it does happen and it's something to to um to pick you know pay attention to kind of keep in the back of your mind this one All right, so this had been cre so this one had been creeping up a trend line and broke down to a pivotal support and resistance level of ninety one point three zero. Wait, hold on one second. All right. Yes, sorry. Um, now, when the price rebounded and made a bullish move. Um, extend it, you know, extend the broken trend line and watch price. You know, the price, of course, respected that after that, um, as a you know, new level of resistance. Excuse me, sorry. Um, so when price started to decline, it stalled temporarily at our uh, which one? Was yeah, there we go, our 92225 near the pivotal support and resistance and 50 EMA. When this level broke price, use the 50 EMA as resistance before rolling over. So the fact that um, 913 was broken immediately also, you know, confirmed this bearish move that, that we kind of see here. So, you know, break below 50 and 92 and then continuation move down um, broke so you know broke here came down held at 91.3 came back up this support here now turned resistance up here came down tested the pivotal support at 92 also happened to coincide and meet with the 50 continue to break through it went down to test <coughs> excuse me went down to test our 91.3 which happened to match up here at previous support, went ahead and broke down below that. So, you know, trend's kind of broken at that point. Um, let's see. We do have WTI. These charts are kind of old, but they work. All right. Um, so this one had broken above a descending trend line, but found resistance at the 110. So broke above these these, these kind of trend lines, found resistance. Uh, well, I guess here. So popped up, held up here, set our top of the range. So we'll call this tip. You know, for the for the sake of the image, we'll call this our all time high in this case. Um, and then you know test it here try it again at 110 you know so go, we're gonna go ahead and draw that trend line um so if we were to you know draw another one so we created a descending channel but we have a descending trend line here so anyways it found resistance at this 110 level since heading resistance price then traded um you know kind of sideways uh where was it uh, yeah so 115 trade sideways traded sideways um, 
yeah so between one oh eh, what do i call it well i guess there's a better way to explain this um so came up tap tap the resistance here we have a support level here at 102 so you see here it was resistance you know we kind of drew some in some resistance line here we had some consolidation in through here where it also tested several times and then we made for that break higher stopped at 110 had our trend line and then we kind of range traded between that 102.30 and 110 line the 1010 is pretty important because it's also the 38.2 retracement level it's the pivotal support and resistance it's a broken resistance from previous you know so from here and here so it's broken and it's now being tested as support and there's two rejection spikes on this level which which adds some confidence um the rejection spikes provided extra confluence or confidence rather uh to talk about you know it to really tell and talk about you know the story of what bears are trying to do and how they're thinking being that they had uh failed on two attempts to break this level and and in, in the even 102 30 breaks breaks the 100 well no sorry if the 102 30 breaks the 100 is is the next level of support um and that's going to be due to our 50 percent retracement here also while being a pivotal level which of course we see that it did break um so kind of wrap it up so there's nothing that's kind of really magical about support and resistance i see them purely as a logical way of breaking down price to aid in your trading plans there's there's only two outcomes to the behavior of a support and resistance level it will either be respected or it will be it, it will be broken if respected you know go to plan a if it breaks go to plan b once combined with trend lines you have a more uh, coherent view of the market which will allow you to time your entries exits or know when to kind of keep out of the markets altogether so uh kind of like a plan would be you know like if a level of support holds we can look for bullish trades in the same direction of a bullish trend for a higher probability of trade. If there are multiple levels of support in the same area, it provides us with greater confidence this level may hold. Um, we can consider placing our stop you know, behind or below this level of support. And we can also consider placing our take profit near the next level of resistance. If this level of support gets broken, we'll get stopped out. If this level is significant, we can expect a larger downside movement and, you know, kind of create a new trade plan. Uh, I'll tie this in uh, maybe in a few weeks on some option strategies. I don't know if you guys are trading options all the time or what exactly it is you're trading, but I know a lot of people do trade options. So I may go ahead and try and tie this into more of an options trading strategy thing. Um, but anyway, so support becomes resistance and resistance becomes support. The longer a level holds, the more significant it is to be considered. If a significant level breaks, a significant subsequent move can be expected. Uh, use Confluences of support resistance to increase the probability of it being respected. It's not the end all be all. It just adds confluence and adds probability of trade. And then support and resistance levels can, of course, be used to plan entry and exit. So your stop loss and take profits. Um, again, to identify support and resistance, going to start by using horizontal support and resistance zones, which are going to be our spikes, swings, and congestion areas. Uh, trend lines and channels, pivot points, Fibonacci's, and moving averages. For greater confidence in levels, zoom out for a bigger picture. Identify support resistance on higher time frames, then work your way down to smaller time frames. Use confluences of your support and resistance as they appear. Combine with other analysis, of course, always do that. And then allow yourself, you know, some breathing room on, on items whenever you're trading. So... 
that's going to kind of wrap up the you know support and resistance i was originally just going to do bare bones support and resistance but that would have been too short so glad we got the chance to kind of add in some added a little bits to support and resistance and how you can use some other things in addition to um to kind of help help better yourself and position yourself better in a trade to give more confidence and add the higher probability of success in there so with that if does anyone have any questions or are we understanding the the video will be up on youtube here shortly so if you want to rewatch it you'll be able to do that but if we don't have any any questions go ahead and wrap it up here i know the day was a bit shorter than the last two weekends but i'm tired <laughs> i'm exhausted so Alrighty, if that is all i'm gonna go ahead and in this recording you know thank you all for coming out here and, and hanging out with me today it was fun thanks for being here glad you guys are here learning and getting better so Go ahead and wrap it up here, and then I will see you all uh, um, Tuesday, because tomorrow's a holiday. So, bye YouTube.